I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, I want to show you yet another application for control switches. We're going to look at several different ways to use control switches to control parameters in different effect blocks on the Axe FX3, FM9, and FM3. If you didn't watch last week's video, with control switches. You might find that one really informative as well. We took a look at using control switches to engage and disengage multiple blocks at the same time, independent of scenes. That one is, of course, up on the channel at the moment. However, the way I normally use control switches the most is to control various parameters in different effect blocks. I'm going to take a look at some of my favorite applications of this. We'll look at how we can engage and disengage the built-in app preamp boost. We'll look at how we can change the speed on modulation effects. We'll look at doing auto dive bombs. And we'll look at a really novel way to create a wah if you don't have an expression pedal. So I'm using a Fractal FC12 for this particular video hooked up to the Axe FX3. And let's just take a look at FC Edit really quickly because I have modified layout eight to be my control switch layout. So I have all six available control switches accessible on this bottom row. But control switch number one, two, and three, you'll see the function is set to latching. So this means when I press that particular foot switch, the control switch is going to be engaged and it's going to stay engaged until I press the foot switch again. Control switch four, five, and six, you'll notice that I color coded them to be the same, all have the function set as momentary. So these are only going to engage the control switch's function when I am holding down on that particular foot switch. Alrighty. Let's start with the main guitar tone. I'm using the Atomica High Amp model. I'm using my go-to Greenback cabinet IR that you can get for free on Exchange. And I have the awesome London Plate Reverb just for a great hard rock tone. <laughs> Again, I say it all the time, the Atomica High is such an awesome, awesome amp if you love modded Marshall tones. The first thing that I want to demonstrate is how to engage the built-in amp block input boost. You'll notice that at the moment I have this switch set off. So the switch has two functions, off and on, as you can see there, really, really straightforward. I've got it set to the CC boost type and I have 12 dB of boost. Now this is in the preamp section. So what this is gonna do is just add more gain. And we can hear that when I turn the switch on. Now, of course, I don't wanna have Axe Edit open and a mouse to click this on every time I want a little bit more gain. This is where the control switch modifier function comes in. So let's do this. Let's right click this switch right here and let's set the source to control switch number one. Control switch number one, we remember, was in the bottom left of the FC12, the way I've set up my FC12. So if I wanna turn this boost on and off now, I can just press this foot switch on and off and I can do it while I'm playing and it's gonna be seamless as well. <laughs> Now, I personally use this in my live preset, and I actually assign the same control switch to the ideal tab fat switch, for example, when I'm using a boogie model, and this just sends my main rhythm tone right over the edge to be a totally over the top lead tone. So using control switches to turn functions like the amp block, input boost, fat switch, the cut switch, the bright switch, as basically just a kind of like pedal if you like, means I don't have to have a drive block in my preset. So let's leave that one there. Another great example of using a latching control switch would be to control something like the reverb hold function. So let's do this. Let's change this reverb to one of the big cloud types. I'm going to bring the mix up. What I want to do here is I want to freeze the reverb for use of a better term. So there is a stack and hold function down here. If I select stack, what's gonna happen is the input to the reverb is gonna remain open and I can create like an infinite layer of reverb. If I select hold, then it's basically gonna freeze the reverb at a particular moment. So let's do this. Let's right click this and we'll use control switch number two, which again is latching and we'll set the maximum to hold. If I wanted this to engage the 
stack function. I could set it just here, but I want it to hold the reverb. What I'm going to do is just play a big chord, press control switch number two, and then I can play lead lines over that particular chord. So let's try something really big and dirty. <laughs> Awesome, right? So that's using a latching foot switch because in that particular case, I just want to press the switch once and I want to have that chord freeze as long as I like without being tied to pressing the button. Another cool use of a latching foot switch would be to create a like break style effect on something like the rotary block. And what I mean there is I want to be able to change the speed or the rate of the rotary. So let's use control switch number three in here. And again, it's set to be a latching switch. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the attack and the release of the switch so that it doesn't just switch in 10 milliseconds. It has a really nice slow ramp up and down. And let's go for something like 300 milliseconds attack and 300 milliseconds release. Then I can set the maximum and minimum rate. So let's go for a minimum rate around 1.5 hertz and a maximum rate somewhere around 7 hertz. Now, check this out. I need to engage the rotary block. And I kind of like it before the amp block in a lot of cases. It sounds like this. I'm going to hit control switch number three now and watch the rate parameter slowly climb up. It's going to take about 300 milliseconds to do it. And you can also hear the rate speed up while I play. I could play with these attack and release times to really get that ramp up and ramp down the way I like them. For example, you might like the ramp up to be a little bit slower than the ramp down. Let's set the uh, release, which will bring us down to that value at like 100 milliseconds. And let's go 500 over here, just for a point of difference. <laughs> handy and you can of course apply this to any modulation effect you like that has a rate control not just the rotary it works great with stuff like choruses and tremolos as well let's just bypass that block all right we need to talk about momentary foot switches right here and I have set up this advanced whammy to give me an octave down effect when I have the control parameter all the way up so if I engage this uh, at the moment nothing's happening <laughs> But if I turn the control all the way up to 100%, I have an octave. So what I want to do is assign a control switch to this control parameter. Uh, let's go control switch number four. And as you can see, the minimum and the maximum are where I want them. But I'm using a momentary switch for this. So I need to be holding the foot switch for this octave to basically come in. And I could combine this with the attack and release trick from before to basically kind of get like a dive bomb sound. So I don't have a tremolo or a vibrato bar on this guitar. You imagine doing like a slow kind of dip on that and then letting go of it. So the release would be quite fast, but the attack would be quite slow. So maybe let's go 120 milliseconds for the attack and 10 milliseconds for the release. And watch this, I have to press and hold this controls. So you can see that it falls down a lot faster than it climbs up. And I can play around with this to get some really, really fun effects. <laughs> That 
was kind of fun there just stomping on that for some glitch style effects on there. So again, you can totally tweak the attack and the release to your liking, but we're using a momentary switch there. Let's bypass this because I think one of the most useful applications of momentary control switches is, let's just say, like me, you're a bit forgetful sometimes and say you show up to a gig or a rehearsal and you've forgotten your expression pedal. Now I use wah like all the time. It's one of my go-to so-called cheat codes. Uh, but if I forget my expression pedal, which I've done more than once, I know it's embarrassing, I can always hack together this kind of solution where we're gonna use a momentary control switch and we're gonna play around with the attack and the release on that control switch. So I've got my favorite wah ready to go. Let's just assign another control switch to this. Let's do number five. Remember number five is also a momentary switch in here. What I've also done is if I look at what I've done here with this, I can turn auto engage on to say be like a fast speed so that I don't actually have to engage the block. I just have to press control switch number five and it's gonna engage the block. Now I had a very fast attack and release there. I find between about 150 and 100 milliseconds is the go-to and just offsetting the attack and the release very, very slightly in here. So basically just like a bit of damping, you might call it on the modifier, it means that I get a really nice kind of swell up and down with this. And I almost think about it like the amount of time I press down on the switch is how far forward my wire is. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna engage control switch number one. So my amp boost is on, let's check that. Preamp input boost is on, that is pretty awesome. And then I'm gonna play by just kind of randomly pressing control switch number five and it's gonna give me a pretty good wire tone. <laughs> I said earlier that one has got me out of trouble quite a few times there are so many more ways you could use a control switch to control various effect parameters on the Axe FX3 the FM9 and the FM3 and I'm sure you all have some favorites. So why not share your favorite applications of using a control switch with different parameters on different blocks in the Axe FX3. A couple that come to mind for me would be attaching a control switch, say, to the delay feedback or the delay motor speed on the tape delay to do some kind of like really fun ray gun style effects. You could assign it to the drive control on a drive block and give yourself like an extra layer of boost without having to use two drive blocks. Or again, the fat switch, the input boost, uh, just kind of any parameter, like the input trim is a really good one. If you just have a minimum and a maximum value that you wanna play around with, you can use it for auto swells. Uh, again, you could take that wah trick and use it with a volume block or use it with just about the level on any other block uh, to kind of hack an expression pedal style thing in there. So control switches are far more than just a simple on and off switch. Once you get those uh, kind of latching or momentary ideas into your head and then you play around with the attack and release on the modifier menu, they can do some really, really dynamic things and they're really fun. So let me know about your favorite uses for control switches in the comment section below and I'll see you for another Tuesday Tone Tip next week. Thanks so much for watching.